In this video, we're going to focus how we can use a remote CSV file like this one here and making sure that this data is instantly in our chart here, matching it around. And this is just really the starting point. And you can see here, let's make this to 100. And if I save this, you can see this is number five here. But if I refresh, instantly this file or this chart has adjusted itself into 100 here. And this is very useful. So let's start and explore how we can use this. In this video, we're going to focus on how to create a chart with a remote CSV file in JavaScript with Chart.js. All right, so this is very important because what we're going to do here is different than from a file that we will upload. And we will not be using Papa Parse for now. So I was planning to use Papa Parse, but apparently it's very complicated to integrate them with this, but I will make a separate video for that. However, what we're going to do is we have this file here. This is a CSV file. And what we want to do is we want to create a chart out of it. Just a quick note, this is based on a local host. You cannot do it directly from your desktop. So it must be a local host or a server that you're working on. That's how you have to connect with it. Else, you're not able to do it. Secondly, the file must be on that same hosting local host and it cannot be a file stored in a other hosting or web hosting or somewhere else if you will try to connect it you might get a course error which restricts you to connect to an external hosting unless you have a sort of structure for that to to allow it however very important so as you can see here this is the file I uploaded to my own local host here on this folder so I'll be using this and in here we're going to create the chart so to do this we're going to use instead of what we're normally used to is like papa parse we're going to use chart d3 or basically d3.js and this is the most easiest way to do it so let's start and explore how to do this first of all what we're going to do is we're going to grab our getting started part here just go to the getting started website here or chartjs3.com getting started and you can see here video if everyone want to understand it, we just copy all of this here. And once we have this, we're going to put it here down, paste this in here, cut this out, paste this in here, and then save. Once we save this, refresh, we have our bar chart here. All right. So this is just the basics. What we want to do eventually is we want to grab these files or these values here in this CSV file, which is called the name of chart data.csv and this one basically want to extract and put it in there i'm going to grab all these costs etc etc so how are we going to do this well first of all i want you to go and grab the chart.js or basically not the chart.js but the d3.js library this is absolutely crucial without it it's just not possible as of now so copy this link and grab this one and then what we're going to do we're going to paste it here below just somewhere here doesn't matter it, both of them need to load anyway so underneath here we're going to start working with it so what we're going to do here is basically we're going to use the benefits of d3 javascript library and use their csv uh, converter or parser we will parse it make it readable in javascript and from there on we can start to work with it what is quite nice is this d3 they have their own javascript parser built in for csv which is very nice chart.js does not have that that's why we use papa parse normally to convert the csv files into chart.js or make it readable for chart.js all right so what we're going to do is first of all is i'm going to grab here constant i want to get the chart data file so we can just say this is the chart data this is the chart data equals then here we grab the link of the file so that should be this link here i'll copy this one here this is the one because this is the file direct link to the file we're going to paste this in here you can see this is the local host so next what we're going to do is we want to connect them but what we want to do is we want to parse the file to uh, from basically from csv to json so what we're going to do here is we're going to use the d3 dot csv command then here we can grab the data that we want. So we want this 
file which we have here that we named here that's basically this here now we say here dot then and then give it a function so basically here what you're really doing is here is like a uh, promise function you let it load and grab the item here and then what we're going to do here is we say data points because what we want to do is we want to grab these data points here basically all of these are considered as data points so we name them as data points and then within here we're going to have curly braces we can put this all together nicely and once we did this all we can do first is we can check we say console log dot data points and what will happen is if I save this and refresh here open up the developer tab you can now see we have an array which is an array with nine values here and what is quite nice here compared to Papa parse it already cross reference them together or cross match them here cost etc etc all of these values are in here so beautiful you can see it on the sense it's three columns here one column is cost other one is profit and then of course revenue so what we're going to do now is we have this, but what we want now is of course to make sure, because right now they're just all together. I want to strike, well, basically split them all separately for cost, profit, and revenue. And then we show here, for example, a bar chart for the cost data points. So what we're going to do in here, to do this, we're going to make a new constant, and this constant we can call the cost. And this will be a blank array, we can make another one as well for profit and revenue and the reason why I'm using profit and revenue because we have these terms here it's just for simplicity being very consistent here so it's a profit and finally here we have revenue so once we have this what I want to do is the following we need to have a for loop here and in this for loop basically pushes this value here every time in the cost and this value into the profit and the other one to the revenue so it understands that we have a single value here, or basically a list of these values only matching to cost. So what we're going to do here is a for loop. So we say for, and then in here we say i equals zero. And once we do that, we want to loop through this. Remember we have our data points here, and our data points can read the length already. The length is not only this, but the length here is nine. So we have here nine. An array of nine items we just correct from zero to eight is nine so what we're going to do is basically we're going to say here data point length data point dot length and then we say here i we keep on iterating as long as the data point length is bigger than i once i surpasses this it will stop so we say here this and then we say here, i plus plus for incremental increase increase incrementally and then in here you can say here, let's use here the array function. We get first one of them is this one here, the cost. And you want to push. You want to push this value. And what we really want to push is basically the data point, but very specific. You can see here. So we are in the data point, data point zero. And then from data point zero, I want the cost. And data point zero, I want the profit. So we say here, data point zero, which is an i, which is the number here. And then we say dot cost to push in here and the same what we can do here is not only for this we can do it for all three of those so profit we get the profit and revenue we'll get the revenue here all right so the moment we do this what we can do here is a console log and then we say all right just grab the, the cost here and we should have now the results in here if i refresh this you can see here oh did it work properly yes all right just take a second and the problem is and this is the reason why i'm not really in favor of doing this but this is just the easiest way as of now is if we are having two different libraries that we need to load so it takes a bit longer and pop up parse is also another library but it's very condensed which is better because it loads faster so sadly enough as of now we don't have it so you can see here this is one and then ten etc etc we can check our values here the cost is 1 10 7 etc etc so if we go in here and let's make this 100 if i save this now if i refresh you can see this changes here immediately and let's check here this here value is 1 so if i refresh now it becomes immediately 100 so 
it will immediately respond to it once the data changes here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put this in here. But if we're going to put it in, we cannot say cost equals data here. And this will give you an error. If I save this right now and refresh, we get an error here. It says cost is not defined. What's going on here? Cost is not defined just for one reason. Remember, we're here in this specific item. And the constant is what we call a scope. Yes, this is a block scope here. And the problem right now is we are here in the data outside of the chart, or basically outside of this scope. This is a scope here. Within these brackets, it keeps on working. That's why this, this console works here with the cost. But the moment we are outside here, we get an error. You can see that as well. I'll just comment this out, save that, refresh. As you can see, we get an error. Number 27 works because number 27 is this console log here. But everything else is not working. So what is the solution here? Well, the answer is simple. We move everything within this specific scope. So we get all of the code that we have here, chop this out, put it in here, and then when we say here, proper indentation, we tap one time, and now we have here, Cross. If I save this, refresh, you can see now this one is 100. That is correct because it was set on 100 here. And we can get here 10. This should be 10, 7, 6. And if I'm now going to change this, let's say we make this 5, refresh, it will move instantly to 5. And this is basically the way how we can connect with it. And in the next video, we'll just dive a little bit deeper in this how we can start to use multiple of these data points here. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.